I am pleased, please be. Oh. You're the backup, right? These bloodthirsty sprat bags have no respect for the law. We're pinned down. I don't understand either. It's not like I tortured them or anything. That was somebody else's job. You've got to help us. Please, kill them. Summary justice for the whole lot. Bust through. Are you out of your mind? Those animals will tear us apart. Oh, law. You're right. Okay. Come on, guys. Rifles up. Let's kick these rung leeches out of our docking bay. For the chairman. Tartarus security out. Transmission terminated. How can I be of assistance? I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. Groundbreaker should understand well enough now. Sometimes violence is the answer. It would be too late to back out now, huh? Fear not, Captain. I'll watch your back. May you find peace in death!
got a fight on our hands. No less for that. Neutralized. What the? If I still believed in knowing You know, I could have sworn I tested you for hearing loss. Because I did say skip the hope to Terra 2. Terra 2. Not Tartarus. We could have saved this colony, you know. That was always the plan. I revive you, you do as I say. I tell you to go there, get me this, shoot that, and you do as I say. If you just listened to me, we could have rescued everyone on the Hope. We could have been the saviors of Halcyon. But you didn't listen. No one in this damn colony ever listens. What? Oh, is this thing not working? Can you hear me now? Oh, wait a minute. You were mocking me. Unbelievable. If you think I'm going to admit defeat and throw myself at the mercy of the board, oh, you're wrong. I've still got some fight left in me. I can still bloody your nose. Don't you tell me what to do with my blood pressure. My heart rate is within a perfectly acceptable margin of failure. Don't worry about me. Worry about what I'm willing to do. <laughs> 
I've got nothing to lose. I've got nothing to live for. But I'll tell you what I do have. Oh, I've got a gun. And I've got Adjutant Akande as my hostage. Not bad for an old man, eh? Well, yes. The Adjutant is your employer, after all. I was expecting something of a reaction. Say what you will, but I can't risk letting you interfere. The only thing worse than Halcyon collapsing is this psychotic monster living to see it happen. If you insist on interfering, I will be forced to kill you. And I don't want that. Why don't you backbiting, double-crossing ingrate? I loathe everything you've done, but I was the one who revived you. I hate destroying my own projects. I've programmed the Labyrinth's mechanical warden to kill you on sight. I'm sorry to have to do this, but I can't take any chances with you. You were my greatest success. And my greatest disappointment. Thank the law you're here. That madman was out of control. You were right to put him down. He was too far gone to be of any use to us. And what about you? You aren't hurt, I hope. Your confidence is well earned, Captain. I was right to place my faith in you. We don't have a moment to lose. 
We're gonna have to work together to save Halcyon, because the situation is far worse than you imagined. What I'm about to tell you must never leave this room, under any circumstances. Two years ago, the Earth Directorate's frigate disappeared en route to Earth. We don't know if they ever made it. We don't know if there's an Earth to go back to. Earth is only an idea to us, but that idea is the bedrock the colony is built upon. If people were to find out it's gone dark, the shock could be too much to bear. That's precisely why no one else must know the truth. We're going to have to keep this secret to ourselves. We're alone, Captain. That's all I know for certain. Whatever happens to this colony, we're going to have to deal with it on our own. Returning to Earth is not an option. Yes, we do have a long road ahead of us. But I have faith in you. The service you've done for this colony is nothing short of extraordinary. You're the reason I'm still standing here today. The board will survive because of you. And as the board goes, so goes Halcyon. It's time we carried out the program. I trust I can count on your support, Captain. I support your decision wholeheartedly. You've proven yourself the most capable leader in the colony. Now more than ever before, Halcyon needs strong leadership and a steady guiding hand. I look forward to serving as your adjutant. We're on our own now. Earth isn't coming to save us, so we're going to have to save ourselves. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The riots in Tartarus ended in a total victory for the board. Without any significant threats to challenge their power, the board asserted their control over the colony. The lifetime employment program began immediately, and the people of Halcyon did exactly what they were expected to do. They obeyed. Sophia Akande converted the labyrinth from a prison to a processing center. She jettisoned the original colonists out of the hope and transformed the ship into a massive storage facility. One by one, the workers of Halcyon surrendered themselves to the program. They arrived with their families and their friends, their colleagues and their neighbors. And then, one by one, they marched into their stasis chambers. As the workers of Halcyon slept in their hibernation chambers, their settlements became ghost towns, left behind by the board to be reclaimed by nature. Only Byzantium remained, a shining beacon of civilization in an otherwise abandoned colony. The people of Byzantium spent the rest of their days gorging themselves on their stockpile of resources. As for the workers of Halcyon, they never felt the effects of the collapse. They never felt anything at all. Left leaderless, the people of Stellar Bay and Amber Heights were slowly but inevitably picked apart by the wildlife of Monarch. Without Lilia Hagen, Sublight Salvage fell apart. The company fractured, evolving into a series of unregulated criminal gangs, fences, and smugglers. Their facade of legitimacy quickly faded. In time, the Sublight family was forgotten. Over the years, the ruins of Edgewater caused irreversible environmental damage to the landscape of Emerald Vale, owing largely to the presence of toxic compounds in the town's building materials. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna leading to an explosion in the Spratt population. Without the commanding leadership of Junle Tennyson, the groundbreaker teetered on the verge of corporate control. The ship's independence eroded until it was nothing but another symbolic brand. 
Once engineering and life support fell into bored hands, the people began to accept that their home was no longer their own. As smaller settlements were swallowed up and their workers drafted into the lifetime employment program, Byzantium continued to thrive. While its citizens lived in decadence and extravagance, a small cadre of scientists worked to solve the nutrition crisis that threatened Halcyon. No one else much noticed the townships that disappeared from the map, or the luxuries that slowly lost their luster year by year. After you killed her parents, Ellie left the unreliable. She returned to her old life in the Groundbreaker's orbit, but her days of mischief and nights of carousal had lost their appeal. She found herself taking bigger and more foolish risks, but something irrevocable had changed. As the board reasserted control over Halcyon, Felix came to realize that his life as an upstart rebel had come to an end. The board's victory crushed any hope for a grand revolution across Halcyon. And so Felix, once again, found himself without a purpose in life. And so, disillusioned with his former boss and with nowhere left to go, Felix left his crew without saying goodbye. He was never heard from again. As a reward for his part in her courageous rescue, the adjutant invited the vicar known as Max to become one of the leaders of the Order of Scientific Inquiry. But Max had no interest in serving any organization, let alone the OSI which he knew would never tolerate his heretical theories. Instead, he attempted to minister to the people of Byzantium. They rejected his ideas, being far too satisfied with their own material comforts. Disillusioned, Max gave up and left the city. He was never heard from again. After Junlei's murder, Parvati turned inward. She was merely quiet at first, and she wouldn't speak unless spoken to. Eventually, she stopped speaking at all. Once the matter of the Hope colonists was resolved, she slipped unobtrusively from the unreliable during a refueling stopover. She took nothing from her birth and left no word of where she'd gone. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail, or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Adjutant Sophia Akande was instrumental in executing the lifetime employment program. Following the death of Chairman Rockwell, Sophia Akande served as the loyal adjutant to her former freelancer, now the most powerful person in Halcyon. With Halcyon's workers suspended in a state of hibernation, Starvation and chaos are problems of the past. The Lifetime Employment Program succeeded in its goals, but that success came at a price. The Halcyon of today is nothing at all like the colony of yesteryear. Power remains concentrated in Byzantium, but all the colony's resources serve the lifestyle of the elite, thereby transforming Halcyon into one of the smallest and most exclusive colonies in the system. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. With Sophia Akande as your adjutant, you returned in triumph to Byzantium. All of Halcyon was yours. In time, you demonstrated a talent for leadership that far surpassed your predecessor, Chairman Rockwell. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years to follow and helped ensure the colony's survival. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. 
the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.